year was 2006. I was working in an IT company in Mumbai, and uh, I had to go to US consulate for my US visa, B1 visa. Now I was standing uh, in a queue over there waiting for my number uh, to be called, carrying a, a big packet of documents, and uh, mentally also preparing what kind of questions I would be asked. And uh, after some time, my name was called. So I went in and met the visa officer. So he started asking me uh, the standard questions, uh, which I was kind of prepared for. And it was going pretty well. And then he asked me, uh, can you give me your educational uh, certifications and documents? And then I gave him a big stack of documents. And uh, you have to give all these original documents and all. Uh, he started going through it one by one. And then he looked at my uh, graduation certificate uh, degree. And then he said, you have done English literature. Interesting. And in the same breath, while he was going through my mark sheets, uh, he's, he commented, you look like a pretty average guy. What are you doing in IT? Now I was confused. What did he mean by that? Should I take that as an insult? Or should I take that as a compliment? So I replied back, you know, beats me. Even for the past nine years, I am trying to figure out what I am doing in IT. So he looked at me, I looked back, I thought, here goes my visa. Because this was totally out of syllabus kind of a question for me. And then he laughed, and I also laughed, and he said, you can go. So I got my visa, thankfully. And so, but when I was going back, I was just thinking and wondering, what did he mean by that, by that comment? And I came to a conclusion that perhaps it was uh, meant for my educational certifications or what score or marks I have uh, got in my school in time. Now, you see, I was never a bright kid at school. Now, uh, in class 10th, I scored, I think, roughly 55 or 56 percent. And uh, I couldn't opt for subjects like uh, computers, while I was good at that, or science, or even commerce, because I had flunked in maths. And uh, the passing marks was 33, and I had scored 21. Now, I had two months period to clear that exam. So I worked day and night, you know, studied day and night, burned the midnight oil, and I tried doing everything that I could do. I went for tuitions uh, to, and sat for the exam again with full you know, chest and rigor. And I passed the exam with the exact score of 33. So which tells you I was never a bright kid. Now, when you see you know, scores like that, per, uh, the persona that the society generally tries to build is, he's an average guy, no, he's an he's a, he's a ordinary uh, kid. Uh, our, my parents were also disappointed, no? and, and usually they, you know, when you see something like that, and, and socially also comparisons start happening, uh, and especially when you have siblings who emit 500 watt of radiance, and in front of them you turn up like a fuse bulb. And I went through that cycle multiple times. And it's not just my story. You know, you'll see there are you know, thousands, lakhs of students around who would probably agree with me. Now, if you look at it, the tribe of ours is not actually average, as it's meant out to be. But it's also because of the environment that we are living in or we you know when we get grown up in that particular environment. Right from our formative years, we are always taught to excel in whatever you do. You are in school, you have to score good, great marks. Parents frown when you don't score. Now you don't know, know your limitations, your capacity, but you keep trying. You push yourself or are being pushed to perform. And, and you keep toiling that way. We were, even before you realize it, it becomes part of your DNA. So when you are in secondary ex school, you have to outperform so that you get subjects of your choice. In senior secondary, again outperform so that you get college of your choice. Again, you know, same cycle for competitive exams and so and so forth. It's a vicious cycle. Even when you settle down your career, you have to outperform so that you fall on the right hand side of the bell curve. No, now it keeps going and going. And, and many of us sail through it, but lot many people also sink. And when you sink, that feeling is not good. You know, it hits your confidence. You start doubting yourself. Why is it happening? To make matter worse, people around you start seeing these struggles of yours 
you know, as being average or as being mediocre or you know, like that. And, and worse, the lens through which they start, see that, start seeing that, it paints you as a failure, which does not really go well while you have been trying your best. Now, this also at times makes you very reclusive. It puts you in your shell. And then, because you're not trying, you're trying your best, but it's still working out. And it leads to a lot of uh, results where people you know, are, are completely cut off from, from the environment. They become depressed, like someone mentioned, or probably even worse. Now, you can't control how the world looks at you. You cannot control that. But you can certainly control the way you look at things around you by adopting certain methods, certain practices that can help you bring comfort, joy, success in your life. Now, these can be probably taking self-care about yourself, you know, uh, putting some measurable and achievable goals for yourself, uh, keeping company in company of positive-minded people, and overall keeping a growth mindset. Let's look at some of the ways that help me uh, bring joy and happiness being the average person. Now, mediocrity is one term which is looked in a very, very negative way in our society. The moment someone says you are mediocre, people just start, you know, stop thinking about it. They are not ready to accept that. They feel if I'm called mediocre, if I'm a mediocre, that means my, my growth path is closed. I'm a failure. But that is not the case. Mediocrity or being mediocre is a natural part of growing up process and it should be accepted. It should be embraced. Because when you embrace mediocrity or when you embrace being mediocre, you are accepting to live a life where you're focused on your own personal goals, where you are in your comfort zone, where you are take, taking things the way it should be planned for you, rather than striving for being a, the perfectionist. Now, having said that, you can also be a conscious mediocre, which, can, which is more of an approached learning to grow with the intention to fail and fail multiple times so that you can learn from each time from that failure and apply those learnings back in your life. So don't shun mediocrity, no? accept it. It's a natural part of your growth process. Now we have heard the term stay hungry, stay foolish. Yeah, fine, works very well. But even before that, very important is to stay curious. Now I'm very much inspired by my 10-year-old son. Uh, his inquisitiveness and curious mindset has held him in discovering new things around him, exploring more from that thing, and build those critical thinking abilities that can, I know, will help him set a platform for lifelong growth and learning. As parents, we should always encourage our kids to stay curious. You never know what might interest you, be it at school, college, at work. Try to find those trigger points that brings excitement in your life. Now, for example, in my case, you know, when I was growing up and, and the kind of academic results that I had, my parents used to push me into all these competitive exams. You know, while staying in Delhi, you know, used to get that gazetted paper, and which had every weekend I had those uh, bank probationary officer and, and clerical exam and whatnot. They used to send me to all this because they wanted me to settle down into some governmental job and be, you know, come and like live like that. But I know, I knew that I was not cut for that. No, I was dabbling in 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 filmmaking, in animation, in creative space, in advertising, things like that. But I knew that I had to do something in that. My interest lied in that. It was very difficult for me to draw a boundary around that. But I knew whatever I do, I would want to pursue that. Now. Passion is not something that you can just you know, suddenly discover. An apple falls on your head and you say, hey, that's my passion. It takes a lot of hit and trial. But keep exploring so that when you, once you find the area of your interest, you know, it can blend in perfectly with your strengths, uh, what you like, and what the society values. Now, my entire 26 years of professional uh, life, 
I've always lived like a sponge. So by a sponge, it means that you are ready, welcoming new ideas, new, ex new, new experiences, and willing to absorb them. A sponge mindset is a, a very growth-driven mindset in which you know that you are creating opportunities for yourself rather than just waiting for something to happen you know, and, and, it's, it, and that's a very passive way. So it's a very, you know, very growth-driven way of, of thing. The pool of information that you have absorbed and collected, you know that it will be very valuable for you in your personal and your professional life. It also leads you to fulfillment. I know it helps you in carving out your growth journey. And analogy-wise, I personally feel it, it goes with what I believe in, which is like a learn, uh, unlearn, and relearn. So like a sponge, you absorb, you learn something new, something that's not working for you, squish it out, and then again relearn and absorb. Now, it's, it's good to be a specialist, and, I, uh, and there are a lot of people who are specialists. No, it's, that's, it's good. Uh, but personally, I also feel you should be good as being a jack of all trades. You can be a master of few, but a jack of all trades is really, really critical in the world that we live in, and it has its own immense benefits. And when I take my own example, now look at me. I started my career in advertising as a copywriter to working, now I'm working in IT, you know, a big lateral shift that, that has happened across the way that is. And all that has happened is because of various skills that I you know, gathered over the period and put that as a part of my armor. Now these skills will help you when the chips are down, you know, it, during the adversity. It will make you res resilient. You know. uh, it will help you, you know, broaden your horizon. It will help you to look at things in a new perspective. And it will also help you make noticeable. More importantly, it's a learning-based attitude, you know, learning-driven model, where when you're gathering these new experiences, new skills, and enhancing your knowledge, that will keep uh, the longevity, longevity of your learning ahead. So, not, so what I have seen is a lot of people resist being a jack of all trades. It's also because you have been pushed from your comfort zone. But my advice is, you no, know, do that. See the, 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 the benefits that come out from that thing. Because once you're put on, pushed from your comfort zone, when you learn something new, new, you know that it will always help you for your you know, future, both in your personal and in your professional life. To summarize, when I look back, and think that what did, why did that officer say that come in to me? I take it as a testimonial to what I've achieved so far in my life. I knew I was average, I'm not denying that, but I didn't let that become you know, an obstacle in path of carving out my growth journey. It's, it's okay to be average, it's okay to be ordinary. Right? It's okay because society accepts you that way. Don't live a life where you are trying to fulfill somebody else's aspiration or somebody else's wishes. That will always make you unhappy. Do things that pleases you. Do things that brings you satisfaction. Do things that are meant for your own personal goals. Do things that brings you complete fulfillment. Thanks.